Okay, so let's um, let's start. I just want to read from uh, Romans uh, twelve. Sorry, Romans one. Uh, Romans one and uh, verse sixteen. Right, verses sixteen and seventeen. Um, so Paul says, you know, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Romans one verse sixteen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay, it talks about why he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You know, he was a bold person, had a radical encounter with Christ. And um, also, I think he's just addressing the fact that, well, somebody could be ashamed. Uh, ashamed meaning not really wanting to acknowledge publicly gospel, right? Maybe because they want to conform to society, right? Or they don't want to uh, be different from others, right? That's they don't want to conform to society. So, I'm uh, sorry, they, they want to conform to society and norms and all that. So, you say, I'm not ashamed. Why? The reason is, it is the power of God for salvation. It is literally, you know, this message that Jesus lived a righteous life and he died carrying our sin and, uh, you know, and, and he rose again so that we could uh, spend an eternity with him. And, um, you know, all this, this the gospel message saying this is the power of God. Okay, so it is literally the, the power of God because it takes the power of God in order to deal with the power of sin. Right? So it's not just a good message. It's not just a good, um, you know, something theory that we state. But it's literally the power of God. Right? Because... The power of sin can only be handled or broken by the power of God. And if you look at it, you know that's why Jesus sent. I mean, Jesus was sent. Jesus, that is why Jesus died on the cross. It took that to destroy the power of sin. Right. So, so he's saying, I'm not ashamed of it at all because yes, this is it. It might seem like foolishness to those you know intellectual people, right? For the Greeks, he says. But this is what it is. Okay, so so also for us, you know, when we consider the gospel, maybe in different settings, maybe with friends, maybe with relatives, maybe with intellectual people, and you know, very rational sounding. It is the power of God. Just understand it. It is the power of God. You know, well, we might be laughed at. We might be, you know, you know, maybe maybe not able to provide all the answers all the time. Right, but understand at the at the core of it all, this is the power of God. Even for those who are arguing, reasoning, the power of sin in their lives is broken only because of the power of God. Amen. Right. Okay, so why don't we just pray and acknowledge this in our own lives? Right, Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the simplicity simplicity of the gospel. But we also know God that. The gospel is powerful. That this is what it takes to break the power of sin in people's lives. This is the only thing, God. And we know that people can reform and Lord and be disciplined and and do all that. But Lord, only one thing is necessary and required. And that's the gospel. Father, we thank you that you've called us, Lord, and commissioned us to preach, to communicate the gospel to everyone around. And maybe do that, Lord with words. Maybe you do that through our lives, Father God. Maybe do that, Lord, in even as the Holy Spirit, Lord, you move in and through us in signs, wonders, and miracles and acts, supernatural acts of grace. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so we've been, uh, we've come to almost the end of this course, right? Uh, inner wholeness. And we've been looking at uh, this whole thing of presumption, reason, uh, with renewing the mind. And it's a, 
it's um, you know we we it's an important topic because we need to consider that um, and also a good resource for us is um, you know one of AP, uh, books written by pastor pastor ashish receiving god's guidance okay so uh, something that will you know we are called to you know hear the voice of the spirit we are called to be rooted in the word of god you know all that is 100% true all that is 100% required right to be led by the spirit yeah that's that is it that's a privilege right to um, to allow the spirit of god to quicken the word for us that's a privilege and also for us to with a renewed mind to capture the truth of god's word a renewed mind is is what will actually capture hold on right otherwise a carnal mind will be will just reject right and the natural mind will will not even consider right and it says that a, a, a carnal mind is unable to receive right because paul writes and he says that hey uh, i wanted to teach you so many things but you are carnal and not able to receive solid food right so so all this is true it is for us um but we need to deal with us presuming something to be true when it is not us presuming that god has spoken when he has not okay now that is why we are called to walk in relationship with jesus right walk in relationship with him this all this is not a hit or miss it's not a trial and uh, you know uh, like trial and error kind of a thing yes we 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 when it comes to you know the gifts of the spirit prophecy and all that we we need to test and we need to hold on to what is good and which means that we reject what is not good okay we have that uh, built in right when it comes to the gifts of the spirit but the thing is this that we uh, it it is to for us to be led away from deception right deception from ourselves like what is the role of the holy spirit the lord jesus said that he will lead us into all truth and the the truth will set us free set us free from fear set us free from deception well, the scripture also says the entrance of the word gives light right so so we don't have to fear right you know will i make a mistake will i assume something as long as we are walking in the truth walking in the light and our heart is to hear from god um and you know we use our minds and not get blown away this way and that you know we we walk in faith walk in truth right okay um so coming to um the next topic about mental illnesses okay so we we we've been talking about inner wholeness we've been talking about things that affect our minds our thoughts reasonings and so on so you know when it comes to illnesses of the mind okay first of all i just want to say that you know there is in today's society there's a lot of stigma what is the stigma it's not it's something that is uh, looked down upon okay something that is uh, uh, well it's a taboo they don't want to talk about it something that is of shame right in society when it comes to mental illnesses and um, you know all other illnesses if you break an arm and you go to the doctor that's fine right you can go around walking and uh, and put your arm in a cast or something and uh, it, it's 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 perfectly all right right but when you talk about it, mental illnesses it's it's always like in secret and because there is a stigma shame and probably it's because of the media right the way media has gone about and and it is also something that is made a joke of right if you if you look at some of the movies of the the past and so on and then say okay you know you use words like i don't know in tamil they use words like loose you know, like i don't know if you use the same words like uh, huh pagal pagal means mad mad in hindi yeah so you know, things like that the use and it's someone is laughed at who is not in their right mind the kids are made you know that's how it's depicted right but the fact is that um, that person needs healing the same way we say okay you know when it comes to divine healing and wholeness and inner wholeness that person is in a place of need is a place in a need of healing so what are the reasons right for mental illnesses um some of the reasons or for 
why these things occur, right? It could be an accident where there is a injury to the head, brain damage, because of which, you know, certain faculties don't happen, don't work the way they are supposed to. Memory loss, right? Um, or it could be even, you know, maybe doctors can add more to it, but accidents, you know, typically. It could be because of a chemical disorder, you know, certain chemicals are not there, like certain um, things like serotonin, you know, they say, right, serotonin, if it's, it's not there, if it's less, then there is a problem, right, leading to, I don't know, depression or things like that. So um, just that altering of that chemical in the brain makes things better, right? It could be also degeneration of cells in the brain. Also, it has a spiritual uh, angle to it. We know that evil spirits also cause, just like any other illness, right? Where a spirit of infirmity or spirit of, you know, you would name it, you know, they cause that. So also when it comes to a spirit of, you know, maybe insanity or something. So while we should we should acknowledge the fact that it can have a spiritual angle, right? It is it can have a spiritual source, but we cannot say you know, all mental illnesses or all mental you know diseases are because of evil spirits, right? Okay. So what do we do? We the same way we would deal with an evil spirit if it is caused by an evil spirit, we would command that spirit to stop influencing, right? We command that spirit to leave, right? Cast out, okay? And um, also when it comes to certain things like the physical aspect of it, we can command a new brain, command a new, uh, I mean, a restoration of the neurons, right? Uh, neural pathway, neurons in the brain. Uh, we, can, we can command those things to come in place, right? Just like how you would command the conditions. We read, you know, the Lord Jesus, at Peter's mother-in-law's house, what did he rebuke? He rebuked the fever, the condition that was making a bedridden. Right? He commanded that condition. Um, he rebuked that condition, and she was made whole. So there's a principle, there's a learning for us. So also when it comes to mental illnesses, and maybe it is something to do with brain cells, maybe it's something to do with you know, neural pathways or neurons not connecting, so we can command. So whatever it is, right? Command cells to revert to the correct number of chromosomes, as in the case of autism and so on. Uh, command the body to be healed and function normally, the facial features, everything to become normal, okay? So we have a list of mental illnesses listed here, you know, autism, Down syndrome, uh, dyslexia, you know, like inability to read, um, right, so some people struggle with it, thinking that okay, how do I say it? Maybe I'm the only person who's struggling, and you know, because of shame and all that um, associated with it, people struggle with it. But they they should actually not live in denial, but come come you know come out, share, and get help. Okay, um, stress, PTSD. I mean, sorry, PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder, obsessive compul compulsive disorder. What is OCD? A compulsive habit, a compulsive thing. Like I think I shared, right? Some one person who kept needed to wash his hands every now and then, right? Or you know, some people like closing the door and maybe the car door, and they bang it again and again, <laughs> right, to make sure that it's closed. Uh, you know, things like that. So some some of these things are harmless, right? But then some of it it becomes a problem to natural functioning of ourselves. So, right? Okay. So, anyway, uh, OCD, right? So, these are things that, um, that, that are part of cause because of mental illnesses. And, and, yeah, and we can pray, we can command these things to come, uh, come to normalcy, right? Okay. So, um, some questions, you know, we, we can um, answer here. Um, okay. For example, uh, Psalm 23 and our basis, you know, for these answers, Psalm 23 and verse 3, what does it say? Who who restores 
God restores. What did he restore? Yeah. Right? He restores my soul. Okay, which means everything that is associated with the faculty of thinking, imagination, intelligence, right? Analysis. He restores my soul. So God is the restorer. And uh, and we know, you know, we've been studying that because of the cross, you know, the restoration has been provided for us, you know, which is a which is a great source of hope, right? Even in, in times of hopeless situations, we can still extend our faith and uh, you know and uh, put our hope and faith in the finished work of Jesus. Right? Okay, three John verse two. Three John two. John prays that prayer. What does he say? He says. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Just as your soul prospers. So, so these and several other verses, right? Um, like 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23, right? 1 Thessalonians 5. May, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. So it talks about spirit, soul, body, that God is interested in the, the, the man, you know, in the person, spirit, soul, and body. Not just the spirit being saved, but also the soul being renewed and made whole, but also the body, right, coming to. So, the, so these are these are important scriptures that talk about that, that God's intention or God's will for us to be made whole, right, in all these areas, okay, so um, the question, are all emotional problems caused because of demons, because of evil spirits, the answer is no, right, because well, there is a possibility it has its source in spiritual source like powers of darkness, but also you know, we, we looked at very various things. Right in the first chapter, we saw, you know, what are the things that cause emotional problems, right? Uh, circumstances, it could be stress because of loss. It could be, you know, a grie grievance or grieving because of loss. We a break breakdown, you know, unmet expectations. So many things. Physical conditions could be a chemical imbalance, like in the brain, right? Serotonin levels or certain other, you know, uh, uh, hormones that are you know not at the right place and it could be because of that also right some things like depression fear you know could be things that some things like low self esteem something that you don't have the skills to deal with or the truth to deal with right or it could be an unhealthy habit substance abuse you know person who's abusing of substance like alcoholism or any drug abuse, or you know things like pornography. Um, like I was saying, you know, pornography it has a physical response. Like right? certain uh, chemicals are, uh, like dopamine and all things are, are actually secreted more, and it's it 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 is at a high all the time, right? And so it creates when the person is disconnected from pornography, they're not getting that hit in the brain, and they feel very depressed. And becomes an addiction, addictive cycle. They want more of that because they want to feel high, and it's like that, right? Uh, so, overeating, or you know, it's like uh, some people want to eat in order to feel good, right? And it's a it's a dangerous thing, right? Okay, uh, oh, I'm feeling a little down. Okay, let me go have ice cream. Ah, now I'm feeling better. Or well, let me have some chocolate, and you know, I I feel good. It's a I mean, it's it's harmless. Uh, to a certain extent, but if you're going to base your eating on your emotional well-being, right? If it's tied down to that, then it becomes a problem. You know, I think, I think that's why fasting really helps, right? You are just putting to death that appetite. Uh, you know, one of which is eating. Okay, okay. So, so some of these unhealthy habits, like lack of exercise and so on, spiritual sources, uh, demonic, um, you know, uh, sources also. So. Second question, uh, is it right for a believer to go to a psychologist, psychiatrist for counseling, therapy? Yes. Right. So just like, you know, if you if you if you have a problem with your 
let's say any part of your body you know you have problem with the heart and you know heart beat and everything you would go to a normally go to a cardiologist to to consult and you know see so in the same way right so psychologist psychiatrist counseling etc so uh, the the psychiatrist would help psych counseling would psychology would counsel right what is the difference between psychiatrist and psychologist any idea psychologist you tell me <laughs> okay anyone online probably can help what is the difference psychiatrist psychologist psychologist psychiatrist uh, so, sorry we just uh, yeah go with, what is the first one psychiatrist mental condition okay okay hmm behavior searched already or <laughs> no you can search that's no problem yeah mm. so so the thing is is that um uh -huh. yeah uh, uh, so a psychiatrist uh, yeah in terms of like um, what nina said in in terms of mental illnesses uh, is a medical uh, doctor who is also authorized uh, to to prescribe medication right uh, so uh, psychiat psychiatrist yes right uh, and so de dealing with the things of the heart uh, sorry uh, of the of the brain yeah mind so a psych psychologist okay um, would deal with behavioral conditions well certain things would be with overlap it is to do with the mind it is to do with the sorry yeah it is to do with the uh, yeah, you know the behavior as a result of what the mind thinks and so on but they will you know they are they are looking at things um, well they they would counsel and give uh, advice based on their changing their behavioral patterns maybe skill and enable them to think of alternatives alternatives meaning what are the different ways is ways by which i can change the way i behave the change the way i look at things right and so on whereas a psychiatrist would go deep uh, you know and say okay you need to be on this medication for so long um, and this will change the condition so um so you know we we, we always say that when it comes to uh, um certain certain things that uh, the psychologist would would prefer that the person go and meet with the psychiatrist because a doctor because this is nothing to do with the physical aspect of the brain uh, or the chemical or the hormone imbalance that the, the psychologist cannot handle that right or uh, or they they would probably uh, be able to identify recognize and say okay this is because of this uh, it's not something to do with the behavior something to do deeper with the physical aspect right uh, and so they need to be dealt with in that manner right so yeah so so the thing is this it's okay to meet a psychiatrist it's okay to go to a psychologist but what is the psychologist or psychiatrist prescribing the method of treatment now that is very very important okay so so they might prescribe medication fine it's helping the body do it but if there's anything any other method that is prescribed which goes against the truth of god's word which violates god's laws okay, then there is a problem there is an issue right like for example you know i i remember this group called alcoholics anonymous right aa so it's a it's a support group for those who are recovering addicts like right? uh, 
alcoholic uh, thing yeah alcohol into alcohol so so they have a they have a group and see it's it's a good thing because they are st- encouraging one another to come out of to stay out of uh, alcoholism right so they have something called the 12 steps method and all that i don't know who started it but so that's the thing but there is one aspect of it where they identify themselves as an addict they don't identify themselves as someone who's walking free okay so so at the start of the meeting they have to say okay i'm so and so addict or alcoholic right but i'm there of course we are there to help and all that but the deep rooted the identity is that you know uh, some things like that and where they say okay fine it's okay to not drink but it's okay to smoke right so alcoholics anonymous groups you can see the people finish and then they come out and they'll be smoking heavy smokers but they don't want to drink because it's because of you know various things it has got to you know cost a lot of problem financial social you know marriages ended and children are in a mess and into heavy debt and you know it's like serious problem so they say okay smoking is okay it doesn't cost me to do all that but then so certain things like that you know so so what is it that the psychologist is is prescribing what method are they prescribing we need to be mindful of that okay okay so is it okay to take medication yes okay so uh, we cannot say that okay now i prayed i've prayed for you and god has touched you god has spoken to me you go throw all your medicines in the trash trash bin we can never say that we should not say that also it can be it can end up in tragedy it can be a very um, you know dangerous thing to do right okay so the thing is that yes some some of them might feel that okay i want to take a step of faith and i want to let go of this medication and um, and i and i know that god has spoken they, they may do that right on their own but even for such people we just need to you know encourage them and say okay you go check with the doctor let the doctor check you right and if you if they say that you're fine you don't need to take it or if they say okay now you try it for some time with the you know maybe one week go off medicine medication you meet me after a week and we'll see you know do that right so because we are not doctors right if we are not medically trained we are not doctors and we have no right to do that okay um i remember like uh, one person who was in like heavy depression heavy heavy depression in the sense that he would sleep right through the day okay he would sleep through the day and he'll wake up by maybe 6 uh, or 7 in the evening and it was not just a sleep cycle that was reversed but it was it was like this because waking up he would find that things were you know uh, hopeless and you know, he had no other thing except to go back to sleep and it was for year after year heavy depression and and so suddenly they used to visit him pray with him uh, visit uh, you know talk to his parents and you know have a study and all that so one day suddenly he called and he said pastor i've decided i'm not going to take my medication <laughs> okay suddenly he said I, i'm not going to take my medication and that's it so then um, then the, i i just the same thing you know did you did the doctor did you check with the doctor no 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 i'm not i'm not uh, i didn't check but i'm just stopping and so you know then i just suggested you know, why don't you go check right go check why why can't you just you know you, you tell him you know i'm feeling good i'm feeling better let the, the doctor check you out and let him let him decide you know and uh, so that will give you a chance to say why this happened and so on so then he said yes okay doc okay pastor no i'll do that i'll go thankfully he agreed right praise god he agreed and he and he did that right but the thing is this um it is not we should not say it's, it's lack of faith you know you're going back to your medication it's not lack of faith you know the person can be you know a person of faith and for some reason they're not seeing that breakthrough right in their body in their mind right so we should not condemn them and say you know you have you know i've prayed with faith you're you're not responding in faith and that's why all this is happening and right okay so do not advise people to take to or not to take medication right okay what about hypnosis 
or mind control have you heard of hypnosis uh, have you been in a hypnotic session no <laughs> now, there are these hip you saw yeah hypnosis and mind control and suggestions some of it is exaggerated in the sense you know, sometimes uh, like i remember reading a comic strip when i was a kid you know comic called mandrake the magician i don't know if you know phantom do you know phantom phantom no okay i i, I think i'm exposing the different era from which i come <laughs> this is the era before cable tv before smartphone before videos internet so it's that age <laughs> so yeah so the, you know the some of it is exaggerated in the sense this man break the magician would just hypnotize just like that he just you know snap like that and hypnotize people and get them to do whatever they want and whatever he wants so anyway hypnosis is actually you know as an act of uh, i don't know i don't know exactly how it works but then it is a series of steps which people employ use in order to uh, suggest certain things to people's mind right so you basically give up control of your choices and to the person so much so the person suggests and says okay this is who you are okay now people say okay certain things are you know they go through hyp hypnotic sessions and they've come out of addictions and all that but is this right god uh you know is it is it okay with god the fact is that when it comes to choices god himself right who is the is the most sovereign is the, is the sovereign person on the earth i mean on the planet uh, or the universe he does not force he does not take away the choice the self will free will god does not right so you know another human being cannot also do that right no matter you know how noble the thing and how uh, you know so to control the mind and also it borders on or it's a starting point for witchcraft or demonic possessions and so on right so yeah okay um so we have a list of you know these uh, I, i think a lot of this is covered in healing and deliverance right uh when you look at the um, deliverance aspect of it you know you, uh, these are some scripture verses which talks about the different kinds of spirit spirits powers of darkness that the bible talks about you know deceiving spirits jealous spirit familiar spirit blind spirit and so on okay so so these are things which cause this unnatural or symptoms or unnatural or intensities of you know these kind of conditions right is a spirit of disobedience spirit of divination perverse spirit spirit of heaviness and so on right so scripture talks about it therefore we um i'm sorry um uh, nina volume level um can everybody hear what is uh, can everybody hear me well, it's loud enough yeah i, I think may probably it is uh, for you nina Oh, it's it fluctuated is it okay 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 fine okay so we we have these uh, you know to help us guide us identify so identify why do we why do we want to identify the spirit so we can cast out but why can't we okay you don't tell me your name i'll still cast out no it has to go the authority right okay so so um, yeah yeah so recognize and deal with what is the condition that it's causing okay deal with it and what is it especially you know what is it that is open the door like if it's a you know spirit of disobedience rebellion spirit of divination what is it that has opened the door you know maybe somebody tried dabbling or somebody tried experimenting with the occult or something right so it is also to help identify what is the trigger what is the open door so you the person need you know person should be careful not to repeat it right that also okay? but also specifically you know we can just cast out um, in the name of jesus right okay any questions further questions
Okay. Well, the last section about deliverance and about the deliverance minister. Okay, this is um, again in healing and deliverance. I'm not going into it in much uh, detail, but just to say that um, you know, as a person who wants to deliver, what Francis? Finish? Yes. <laughs> we got to the end of the race. Yeah. So as we, um, you know, as a deliverance minister, it's it's important for us to be, you know, spiritually healthy, right? Spiritually strong. And also physically as well, and we we see that you know spirit, soul, and body we are interconnected, and and um, therefore, right, it it needs to one influences the other, right? If we are at a, let's say weary, tired, and definitely you know that influences our spirit man as well. You know we are, uh, we might be you know internally we might be strong, but then externally we are not. Physically we are not. That's why. Um, like Jesus said, right? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we know that it is interconnected. Therefore, be careful, take adequate rest. Okay, so here are some things. You know, we don't have to shout, scream, make a loud noise. Okay, now that's the popular thing, you know, right? You increase the volume of the mic <laughs> and the shout out <laughs> so that the devil will, uh, the devil, you know, you shout out louder than the devil. Uh, I mean, I enjoy all that. Okay, uh, please don't get me wrong. You know, I'm also pumped up when all that happens, and I'm like, wow, great. Um, I enjoy all that. But the thing is, uh, more, more power, more love, more power, <laughs> more sound, more power. But the thing is, this you know, it's it's not the the loudness, um, but it's it's just the truth encounter. Right, you can be loud. You can be loud. There's no problem. You know, you loud shout, whatever, um, because in your spirit you just feel that you know uh, tenacity or intensity of wanting to bring freedom, right? Wanting to minister, but always remember that it's the truth encounter, and it's the authority uh, which which you walk in. So authority meaning, you know, how much of the truth is in you? Like how much of the truth do you acknowledge? Do you acknowledge the fact that Luke 10, 19 is a reality in your life? That the Lord has given his authority to trample over serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Right? So do we walk? Do we acknowledge that truth? Right? Because the we cannot we cannot fake authority. We cannot fake it. Right? So I think something you put. Uh, Prince, faith it till you make it. Huh? Some DP you had put recently. Faith, faith it till you make it. Right? It's not the saying is you know people say okay, fake it till you make it or fake it. No, it's 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 actually your faith. It's actually your your you know you, you, how much you acknowledge the truth in your life. Right. So it's uh, it's that right. So so the, always remember that the the spirit is cast out because of the faith encounter, not because of anything else. Right in the natural, okay, um, and also yeah, something that we saw just now. The advantage of knowing the spirit, what kind of spirit, is to to address that specific area, so that the person does not go to that place, does not make uh, expose oneself to that particular condition, right? Okay, um, okay. Okay, certain things that we already know. Don't attempt to cast demons into hell, bottomless pit, etc. You know, it's unnecessary. Just cast the demon out, right? Um, that's it. Okay, so please go through this. I think it's um, it's it's like an appendix to the whole thing. Um, we're talking about inner wholeness. Any other questions on inner wholeness or anything that you might want to add? Uh, to inner wholeness. You have a question? Okay. Uh, so, Pastor, like regarding before we discussed uh, affirmation, like talk to ourselves, like declare. So, like in my past time, I uh, researched regarding hypnosis. Okay. Psychology, a lot, a lot of things. So I found one thing like regarding affirmation mm. and telepathy. 
telepathy okay. telepathy mm-hmm. is like like what we sense like is depending upon our respiration control our breath control and all mm-hmm. but it's kind of demonic also mm-hmm. is that thing also is coming and regarding hypnotism also i i like i mm-hmm. discovered something like okay in there also we can mm-hmm. uh see the um, a yeah, demonic things and like my question is like as if telepathy and it like even i try to work out but it's worked also okay so if <laughs> in case like so telepathy is uh, trying to read thoughts and, not read uh, thoughts uh, that is mentalism we can connect is with the tricks and all okay but is telepathy is like us if i want to a uh, prince bro take this bottle mm. i'm thinking he is doing uh is kind of that right. he's helping for me yeah that's what so your thoughts instructing his instructing his mind yes yes mm? okay so it's like even our prophetic ministry also we are finding like God, holy spirit is giving and in case like these people discover telepathy and all they are saying there is no god mm. in case there's guys are coming and making a discussion like okay we can also do you can also do mm. so how to manage that situation yeah so the whole thing is the whole aspect of counterfeit okay so just because there is a counterfeit it doesn't mean that the real is not authentic you know so that's the thing no like whenever whenever there's a real thing there is always a counterfeit counterfeit is a very poor substitute of it a counterfeit does not bring in any benefit right it does not have value but it looks like the same thing you know it it looks like the same thing and in this case it's an open door for the for the demonic right so you know the bible talks about how uh, rebellion is like witchcraft how manipulation is witchcraft so that's the thing right so it's not uh, it's not for the good but it's for the bad it's it's for bringing in control subjecting whatever see whatever jesus did or jesus came to do it was all always to set people free open prison doors if you look at you know the, the why did he come healed broken hearted set people at liberty but whatever is demonic always does the opposite you know it might give a sense of freedom but actually like you do what you want you know there's no rules you do what you want but it's actually imprisonment so that's the thing so um i'm just thinking of you know uh, in the same topic like when we look at um like uh, moses and aaron uh, you know they go to the pharaoh's court and then uh, they are you know they do all these things you know they throw the, the the magicians also do the same thing right so god doesn't tell them not to stop doing it so we need to pursue uh, the supernatural but we know that there is a you know it it whatever is the counterfeit uh it it comes to an end right it does not produce what righteousness produces so so if people have an argument saying okay we can also do the same thing it's it's not the same thing first of all it's not the same thing and uh, like the source is different but they may not understand when you say or they may not even you know take the thing take it in and you say the source is different so um yeah so there's no point in i think arguing you know but rather to to maybe demonstrate what god can do in their lives you know talk about certain things and uh maybe god gives a word god gives a word of knowledge or of wisdom and you see how the how pure it is right because 1 corinthians 14 talks about the fact that okay when someone comes in who does not know god and you prophesy it says that the person's you know acknowledges or comes to a place of acknowledging this truly is god and that leads to a place of uh repentance for them you know acknowledging it says just fall and then they acknowledge that you know truly god is among you so which means that um the the knowledge that god or exposes you know information that is well so you know it comes with that anointing it comes with goodness it comes with a tenderness that a person cannot refute you know a person or a person cannot they may not on the face of it they might say you know this is all you know i don't believe it but then they are touched on the inside because it comes with that tenderness it comes with truth it comes with a redemptive quality not to put down or you know 
so it comes to the heart of god so so that's the that's the only way i guess yeah it's not to overpower and you know i'll go this i'll do this. it's it's uh, like that yeah or of our subconscious hmm what we constantly mm. desire mm. in our subconscious mind over and over and there is a tendency for it to happen mm -hmm. so i read it in a book uh, it's called power of subconscious mind so like when you desire for something mm. more and more and when you dwell mm. on it mm. or like desiring for it to happen like things work out i don't know how but somehow it comes to pass and it will happen mm. actually okay you look at it from the point of scripture Wait, don't put the mic. Okay, now you are thinking about something over and over again. Is it a good thing or bad thing that you're thinking Anything about? No, in, in your case, do you pick one? Good thing. Good thing. Okay, so you you think about it. So that is what you are hoping for. Yeah. That is what you are desiring for. It is in line with God's will, and it fills your mind. It renews your mind. So what happens when your mind is filled with that? your imagination is filled with that what happens what does it lead to my behavior regarding to it right. how i act how exactly. is uh, your choices your yeah. your because your mind has changed your mind is filled with your behavior your thinking your your action changes yeah right we we'll act according to it exactly so you know there is that aspect of okay we you going for it you are you know maybe working towards it planning towards it there is that aspect of it right and we are saying okay it's a, it's a good thing so it's the desire of your heart are you delighting in the lord yes okay so you are delighting in the so what does scripture say you know you delighting delight yourself in the, in the heart it lord the and it give you the desire of your heart so it's a good thing it's not something you are not asking a miss you you delighting yourself in him lord fulfills the desires of your heart okay so that's that's one part of it but what if it's a negative thing evil spirits will come and they will make it happen <laughs> so is it it maybe it is it's something negative it it's a, we could say an intense craving it's an area of maybe lust or when i say lust i'm not talking about lust of the flesh I'm just talking about you know intense craving right zeal zealous for the thing and it's not something that is so it's not something that is producing peace right you're moving away from them. and god would, being a believer god would you know speak and inter, try to intervene and etc but it, that is what cause you know that is what full your mind is full of that means your action your thoughts your speech and everything you are instead of moving into the will of god you're moving away from it right and yes you're, you're positioning yourself and it becomes like a self fulfilling like a prophecy right you're positioning yourself for it you're positioning and you're so that's so that's i mean that's my explanation you know one way of uh, thing right so job himself says you know that the thing that i feared greatly um yeah and i'm not saying you know that is the only thing but then this is job's thing you know that he feared greatly Yeah, there's a question here, Jack. In um, Pastor, while praying for others, healing, especially for sickness like cancer, at times God reveals to us that it's because of bitterness and unforgiveness of the suffering they've had in life. How do we continually pray for them when they are not in a spiritual state to receive? Okay, so when it comes to um, healing, uh, you know, when people say there, there were people in Jesus' times who were not in a place to receive, like who were not in a physically they could they did not have the faith, like the man at the pool, Bethesda. right he um, he was not in a place solomon's porch right so he was not in a place to receive in fact the lord asked him hey uh, what do you you know do you want me to heal you he says you know whenever there's a thing water comes and stirs up and then nobody is there to put me in the pool right so which means he was not even extending he was not expecting but still the lord healed him so healing happens in different ways right it happens because of mutual faith it because of um like uh, laying on of hands it's because of laying on of hands of the eldership it also happens because of the gift of faith right which means that the other person is not expecting but you if feel free to yeah feel free to 
leave. That's why I'm just answering Jackin's question. So, but you, you exercise faith, right? You expect the Holy Spirit to move in and through you, and the gifts of healing, and and you, you heal, you you know, you go ahead and minister healing. But also, you know, maybe if there's an opportunity, you share with the person and say, you know about uh, not holding on to bitterness not holding on to unforgiveness and uh, teach them so that they come to a better place of extending their faith in Christ right okay right okay Jackie. thank you so we'll take a break and then we'll come back right?